Today's lesson is lesson two in unit four. It is called model of matter diagrams. And what I like to usually re equate this to is when I was in high school, I found physics easier to understand than chemistry. I thought physics was easier to understand than chemistry because I, it was very easy for me to visualize things that the problems or the examples were talking about. Things like a ball rolling down a ramp or a car crashing into a wall. I could visualize that. The hard part with chemistry was when we talked about chemical reactions and changes and things like that, we talked about atoms rearranging because that's actually a big part of chemistry. That was more difficult for me to understand because I couldn't see it in my head. So in Greendale here, we use something called model of matter diagrams where we, are, where we do a lot of sketching of the actual substances that we're working with in an effort to try to um, show what's going on to have a better understanding, okay? So some things to think about are how we represent different types of matter. Now, the first type of matter that we are going to talk about is the solid, okay? And a couple of things about solids, okay? First of all is solids have a definite shape. and a definite volume, okay? The particles of a solid, so solid particles, are organized and touching. So when I say something has a definite shape and a definite volume, if I grab something like, I don't know, this calculator here, I can identify that it's a in three-dimensional space, it's a, a rectangular cube, I guess. Um, but I can calculate its volume by measuring its length, width, and height, right? Um, but its shape doesn't seem to change very much because it's, it's, it's solid, right? So how we would represent the particles that make up a solid is we would draw them in a very organized fashion and touching. So this is how I would represent it. So in this instance, I drew eight boxes to represent eight particles of a solid. And they are organized, they are in rows, and they are in columns. So that's how we generally recognize, or that's how we generally draw um, the solid state of matter uh, in model of matter diagrams. The next state of matter that we are going to discuss is the liquid. And liquids have a indefinite shape. but a definite volume. And liquid particles are disorganized but touching. So when I say something has an indefinite shape but a definite volume, another way to say that is liquids take the shape of the container that they're put in. So, this hand sanitizer we talked about yesterday, we called it a liquid, um, and it's clearly taking the shape of this particular bottle here. If I were to take this hand sanitizer and pour it on the table, it would immediately spread out until it like couldn't spread out anymore. Um, so in that particular instance, its volume would be, or its shape would be different than the shape of the bottle. It'd be flat and maybe round, right? 
whereas here it's definitely a cylinder shape. When I draw liquid particles, and I'm going to draw the same number of particles uh, in all of these boxes because in my head I'm imagining I'm working with the same substance, just in the different states of matter. So I might see something that looks like this. Note that I drew, well, maybe I drew too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I drew nine. That's not okay. I'm going to get rid of this one over here. Okay. So I drew eight shapes. Note that there is no really rhyme or reason to how they are, so they are disorganized, um, but they are still touching. Okay. So that's what a uh, liquid would look like. Questions? You are going to be drawing model of matter diagrams for the rest of the semester at least. So I'm going to go on to the next one, which is a gas. So gases have an indefinite shape. And, uh, and indefinite volume. Okay, so an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume. And the gas particles are disorganized. Um, and not touching and spread out. So if I were to draw that, I would draw, again, I'm going to do eight boxes, sort of spread out as far as I can get them from each other. Uh, something like this, I guess. All right. Note that they are not touching. They are spread out. Um, they're filling up the container that they're put in. Okay. And then when we say something is an aqueous, sometimes that's referred to as a solution. Um, what aqueous means is that there is a pure substance Dissolved in water. The particles are spread out. And surrounded. By water. So again, I'm going to take my pure substance and dissolve it into the water or put it into the water and it's going to be spread out so it's going to look something like this. Okay, and here would be a great time for you to use a different color writing utensil because I'm going to show that this is, um, that these particles are surrounded by water, and I'm going to show that by using a simple X. So it would look something like this. And what I really want to illustrate here is that the particles of this pure substance that we've been kind of working with haven't changed in number, but they are now spread out and surrounded by water. Okay. 
No. Okay. So in this instance, I would make a key because I have two different things going on. So the triangle would be my pure substance. And the X would simply be water. And so that is the basics in terms of how we draw um, the different states of matter. Um, and the <clears throat> one that the, the newish one is something we say it's aqueous. Okay. Now, um, next. But he's still drawing, or can I move on? So now, an element is a pure substance made up of one type of atom. And when we represent that on these model of matter diagrams, we might use a square to represent something like sodium. We might use, I don't know, a star to represent an element like, mm, let's say, neon. But a compound is a pure substance made up of more than one type of atom. And so the way that we would represent that would be a little bit different. So if I had something like sodium chloride which would look something like this for a chemical formula I would write it as and I would connect them in the middle Now, another example would be something like magnesium chloride, which would have a chemical formula of MgCl2. And that would look a little something like this. I might have an MG, which might still be, I don't know, let's make it a triangle. But the chlorine is going to be two circles that are attached to the triangle. Okay, so we are now going to get into the first part of this in terms of demonstrations. Um, and when I come around with the substances in question, you're going to need to have your goggles on. Okay, so the first one that we're going to come around and talk about is iodine. So um, let me get that set up for you. Put your goggles on. Here we go. <laughs> Looking at 
Hopefully I'll find the right place first. I know. I could have said that one. No. Uh, not the best work, but it's what I got. Okay. All right. So um, let's talk for a minute or two about the observations that you made. Let's start with observation number that I would, the first observation I would make would be what state of matter was this substance? Yeah, this so substance was a solid. All right. What else could you say about it? Okay, yep, the color. I did hear a color. I heard somebody say earlier that it was the color. They, they kind of said it was like a dark gray or black. Um, I heard I heard a lot of people say sparkly, okay? In science, there's a special word for when something is, for lack of a better term, sparkly. It starts with an L. Luminescence is good. It, start, it goes with an L-U. Luminated is good, but not the word. L-U-S. Nope, now you're just saying the same thing. Luster. When we say something has a degree of luster, that really means shininess. Okay? So... This was had a, had some degree of luster. Um, how would you describe the the, the texture? I, flaky is a good one. Somebody else used a word that starts with C. Ayana, you said it. Well, how did you describe the shape or the the of the of the solid? Yes, it was crystalline. So we'll say crystal. I said something? <laughs> All right. Um, solid, dark gray, luster, crystal. Uh, let's see what else can we say about it? Okay. I don't know. That might be a, that might be enough. So how would you draw this? Well, it's a solid, right? So we're going to draw individual particles of one of the pieces, and that would look something like this. So you would draw something that looks like that. Now, when I come around and goggle up in a second here, when I come around, I want you to now try to describe anything that you notice that's different. All right, now. Sure. All right, so hopefully you can identify that it appears to be more purple in there. So that's the next part of this. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what's the major change that you observed? It appeared purple, right? Is it because you were going like this? Sort of. Uh, what state of matter do you think the purple was? Is gas. So we had a gas, uh, and the gas had a color that was purple. Now, not all of it changed to a gas. So if I was going to draw this, Uh. Note that when I drew this now, the particles that I drew or tried to draw as gaseous were spread out more throughout the container. 
okay? But there are still some solid particles at the bottom. So this, would this pure substance be an element or a compound? Element. How do you know that? Okay, there's a lot of good answers, but I think the best answer would be that um, this element or this, uh, it, because it's made of one atom, of one type of atom, and it's found on the periodic table. Now, would this be a physical change or a chemical change? Agreed. This would be a physical change. Because the solid iodine changed to gas Gaseous iodine. All right. The next one that we are going to get through is bromine. Okay. You definitely need your goggles for this one, so please. You don't. What about one of How does it like get in your eyes if it's in a tube? If it breaks? If it He's being. He's being paranoid. He doesn't want to get sued. All right, so we're going to try to look at this liquid here. That is not too much. That's orange. That is. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Focus, focus, focus. State of matter, we said, was liquid. Good. Um, many of you made the observation that the tube was light orange. And the liquid... 
was what color would you say? Black. Like super dark brown or black. So I'm going to go with dark brown. What else could you say about the liquid that was like made some people feel uncomfortable? It looks like a worm. It looked like a worm. It stuck to the sides of the container. That's a property known as viscosity. So if so if you take a liquid like water or a substance like water and you pour it down like a plastic ramp, it'll go pretty fast top to bottom and it will kind of all stick together, right? If you take a substance like honey and you pour it down the same ramp, it will take a lot longer to get to the bottom and it might kind of spread out as it goes down. The degree with how fast it goes down a ramp is how viscous it is. So when something goes slower down a ramp, we call it, we say that it's more viscous. So I would say that this substance has some viscosity. All right, now. Hopefully what you'll be able to see if the tube is a darker orange. And it's harder to tell from this angle, but there's actually less of the liquid. <laughs> I know you can put this out. Well, that was on. You remember they're talking about this? Oh, yeah. like a psycho. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Oh, is that so? It's on me. So, the it looks red. Look she's she's the snow one. 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 She's
So now I've tried to show that they've spread out. The gas particles have spread out more to fill the container, and, but I still have some liquid left that, and those particles are disorganized and, but still touching. So is this an element or a compound? Element. Agreed, it's an element. It's an element because it's made up of one type of atom. And bromine can be found on the periodic table. Physical or chemical change? Agreed. It's physical because the liquid changed to a gas in the tube. All right, now. That is where we're going to stop for the day. We still have three more demonstrations we're going to go through on Monday. You do not have homework this evening, so enjoy your weekend, your chemistry-free weekend.